Hi, it's Rick here. Welcome to the third part of my project to create a version of Tetris, which I'm calling Rictris. Uh, the last two days I've uh, managed to make good progress. Uh, it's a lot trickier than I thought this game would be. Uh, maybe my programming skills are a bit rusty, but anyway, I am making progress. There's a few more things I still need to do, and uh, hopefully in the next uh, couple of video tutorials I can get complete. So I'm just going to show you what I've been doing. I've actually split the source code now into all these different sections because it was getting a bit too long in one big uh, program. Uh, to do that you just go to file, uh, new file, then name the file and it becomes part of the project and then you just need to include it. Hash include command then the file name then the source code is all merged into one. Uh, it's really good then you can uh, modulize your different parts of the product and, and quickly find them. Let's just scroll down and I'll show you the new parts of the program. Uh, this lines array, this is used uh, when I'm calculating if any of the lines have been completed. So that's simply just uh, an array that stores a number of values. I actually go through the whole grid and if a line is full then um, I set a flag on that particular line in the array and then when I come to move lines down to replace the ones that have been completed, I use that array. I'll show that in a, in a moment. Then we've got um, some variables here, move shape speed equals 10, uh, move count equals shape speed. So if we change this value here, then the speed in which the shape comes down the screen, let me show you where I'm up to. Okay, so we have shapes coming down, I can press down quickly to put it down to the bottom. But you can see that it's moving a nice slow speed at 25. For testing I, I tend to change it. And if you see we've got a bottom line there then it's all shifted down. And again another bottom line. Now there's a slight bug there, you can see that the green on the left. I'm not too sure what that is, that's probably to do with the copy routine. So I have to solve that one. So you can see progress has been good. And not too far away having a completed version of Tetris. And so on. So what did I do? What else did I do? Uh, I've got a couple of flags here. OK to move left and OK to move right. And this is to do with when you run the program I've got to check I can't go any more to the left or any more to the right. And depending on the shape, that's important we do that. It's very much like the routine I wrote to check for am I at the bottom. And let's have a look at that. In okay, let's go to the main loop. Uh, this is where I'm checking the counter. So I decrease move count. If move count equals zero, then increase move shape y and move count gets reset to move shape speed. So when move count gets to zero, we increase the shape y position, so that's going to move down the screen, and then we reset the counter to move shape speed. You remember back up here. So if we change that to 10, that will make it faster, because it's counting less. There we are, they're coming down faster now. And it's good to have that variable while I'm testing, I don't have to wait forever to try out new things I'm doing to the game. Okay, uh, again the bug's showing there. Back to the main loop and we have a routine here, remove lines. So remove lines is a routine in lines to AGC and what this does is first it jumps to check for lines and this simply goes through all 16 lines and sets that array that I talked about earlier. So for y equals 1 to 16, line equals 0, and then it will go across the x, it will look at every x and y of that particular line, if it equals 0 then line equals 1, exit comes out of the for next loop, that line is not complete. So if it jumps out of the loop then it's not a completed line, but if it remains 0 then that line is completed and has been marked for removal. We come back from check for lines having worked out if any of the lines are complete 
and then we start at the bottom of the list of lines and we go through them and if they're zero then we move everything above them down and then having done that we go to check for lines again sort of recursive type thing uh, until all the lines have been moved down so it's a bit of a tricky routine but you can analyze that and play around with that and see how that works and there may be a bug in there because I'm, I'm seeing some strange things going on but I think that's to do with rotation actually so that's what that routine does in lines.agc back to the main loop so that actual check happens when the current shape has landed at the bottom you know when it's actually can't move any further down that's the point where you go and check if you can remove the lines and then these variables set up a new shape and then a new shape appears at the top of the game so yeah that's um, the main things added to the main to AGC uh, shape checks remember in the last video we talked about check below shape which is quite a big routine well I've had to write one for check left shape and one for check right shape okay and they're doing a similar to what the check below did but they're checking left and right so what we do is we get the first line of a shape and then we go through each character of that shape remember the shapes are defined here so we would get this first line if it doesn't equal to zero then it must be a line so we set check x and this is the offset that we need to then check to see what's beyond that it's a bit confusing but the routine works and we have to do it for each line so we know exactly where to check so we do four of those and then we get down to here the point to make is I actually set check x 1 to 4 to minus 2 because I'm going to end up with an offset that's minus 1 0 1 or 2 so the final check is if um, if you add those x 1 2 and 3 and 4 up if it doesn't equal 0 then there must be a shape somewhere on that side so then we can't move left and we set okay to move left to one and reset the flags and similar sort of case for the checking to the right same sort of routine so yeah that's what that does so there remains a, a bit of a problem still if you rotate like that you see we end up going into the sides so I need to do a rotate check and that is a routine that's going to be a bit tricky but uh, I'll be doing that next and then that will really pretty much complete the game um, I do have a list check for the rotation issue I've just showed you uh, there should be a grace period of about half a second before the shape is actually settled in so sometimes you can come down and just slot into the side so I'd like to add that in some scoring some sound and music and maybe a talent page start and end of the game and maybe some particles to go off if I have time um, so my main objective in the next video is sort out the rotation issue and uh, probably put the grace period in so yeah fingers crossed things go well and i can get this code done quickly and i'll see you in the next tutorial please subscribe if you want to keep seeing great videos from me bye